So upper back tight, this is obviously shoulder blades together, <coughs> which when you've got the bar on your back, it's easy to do because you're in that position, aren't you? So all I'd say to Jake is to think of is trying to bend the bar over his back. So he's just going to pull the bar down like this. So straight away, he's going to be tight there. You might see some guys with the elbows back like that. So all I'd say is just try and bend it and pull the elbows under the bar. So then it's there. Um, who knows much on like bar placement, where to put the bar? You know, does anyone struggle with that? Anyone heard of high bar, low bar? Okay. So as like as a rule of thumb, you, you look at Olympic lifters like uh, you know the snatch, the clean and press. They always take more of a high bar, so the bar's up high, because they usually go real deep into a squat. Power lifters, on the other hand, will probably go as low as possible, mainly because they can't physically get high and they need to get it low to get their arms around because they're so big. But usually because they sit more back rather than down. Olympic lifters will be more quad dominant, power lifters will be more ass and hamstring dominant. Just you know, just because of the nature of what they need to hit in their sport. So find where's best for you. Again, there's no right right answer. It's just it's just kind of feeling what's good. You know, you you know, you just want to make sure that you're tight and it's strong and you, you can you can kind of hold that tension there. Right. So that's your upper back tightness. Um, first thing when you squat, what do you do? So he's got the bar on his back. He's ready. He's braced. What's the first thing you do? Yeah, no. yeah, we'll breathe, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's talk about feet position. What do you do with your feet? Yeah, so what does screwing them into the floor do? Yeah, so screwing your feet into the floor, Jake, as a little example. You know, so you want to create torque in your hips. So what I'd say is start off, start, start with your feet straight. And then imagine cork screwing them into the ground. So you screw them into the ground, so then you, your toes will finish out slightly. So screw them in. There you go. So straight away, after doing that, he should feel a bit of tension here. His knees are then going to be more in line with his toes. So when he goes down, he's going to squat and his knees are going to come out. Um, whereas if you just obviously sit up and then just squat down, you, you've got no tension in your hips. But by adding that little bit of torque, you're going to kind of generate so much more power. Um, so obviously, bar on the back, brace, torque, then what comes next? What's the first thing you do before you, well, when you squat? Who? Chest up, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the positions ready. You're about to go down, what do you do? What do you say? Breathe, yeah, breathe. After that? Yeah, so what do you do? Yeah, so you push your bum back. So yeah, your hips always break first before your knees. So you always want to think, Bum back, then down. So it's like kind of sitting into the hole. Your bum goes back, down, into the hole and up. Um, if your knees don't go out, you'll find that you can't sit in the hole. But as soon as you just create that torque, push your knees out, then you'll just kind of sit in so much deeper. And obviously a deeper squat means a lot of things. So hips back first. Okay, Jake, let's have a little look at that. He's got the back tightness. He'll create the torque with his, with his feet, sit back, and then down. So I'll be honest, Jake couldn't squat probably about a year and a half ago. <laughs> That's probably why I couldn't squat. <laughs> but like Jake's squat, he, like, he used to squat so high, but then he, he had issues. He had a bit of tight his hips. It was your ankles, wasn't it? And what else did you have issues? Knees and hackered. That's probably why they sound like a shotgun every time I do a rep. So it's just making sure you push your bum back, your knees go out. But, like I can say, don't worry too much about the noise. That's not painful, is it, Jake? No. No. So obviously, you know, you're going to get cracks and clicks and stuff. As long as it's not painful, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, so it's making sure your bum goes back, your knees go out, and you sit down into the hole. Um, with having his with having his, uh, his, his, his uh, back tight, his chest is naturally going to be up, isn't it? Because if you're there, if you're squeezing there, your chest is going to be up. Um, and then I would say, obviously, you know, your last one is speed of execution again. So control on the way down, hit depth, explode up. Mm -hmm. um, move the weight fast. What would you add to that, Jake? Just on the uh, chest being up, sometimes people fail a rep because when they're coming out of the hole, the chest isn't up, so they're just leaning forward straight away. 
That's why they fall out of the hole and then they lose all the tension in the floor. But even though it sounds such a simple thing to do, even when you've got a you know a model with heavy weight, just make sure you're really forcing your chest up on the way up. Yeah. I look up and I'm focused on that. Yeah. And you're going to drive up. Hand placement, so you know when you set up on the bar, make sure that you go even. So your hands are even there. Then if you're even there, your head should go under here. So my setup, for example, I mean, there's not, there's probably not a lot of difference. Really getting that back tightness. Screw the feet in. Look up. Breathe. Ooh, I fell over. A bit tender. I did as well. <laughs> so back and forth. So everyone's going to squat slightly different. Some might squat with a bit wider, like a bit wider feet, a bit narrower feet. Um, some may go a bit more of a duck position. There's no right or wrong with this, all right? You know, we all want to squat bench down, if, but if we can't do them, if it's going to put you more at risk, then just say to yourself, why don't I just not do this for a period of time while I work on the issues and, and then I'll come back to it. Like Tom, for example, probably shouldn't be squatting. Um, actually, just do a little demo of what you did. Have a look at the squat. I mean, it's not bad, bad. I've seen a lot worse. But Tom's, Tom's got back issues, he's got stiff hips, he's, his upper back's stiff. I bet he nails us now. <laughs> so, we, so obviously, he's, he isn't going low enough. So then you say to that, if he was to go in our eight week block, he's going to load that position, isn't he? So he's going to load a position that he can do, which is just this and this. Is that helping his other issues? Not at all. So it's like, well, why do it? So is he better off doing the famous Bulgarian? So, so it, obviously he's going to get a lot lower. He's going to get more of a stretch. So just always keep that in mind. If you can't do a lift, if we say don't do it for a period of time, it's not like we're picking on you. It's more like we're doing it for your own safety as well. Okay, so obviously don't squat is one thing. Name the points. Grace. Who? Feet, yeah. Coffee. Yeah, tight upper back. Yeah, Holly. <laughs> and then fast up, yeah. Um, one thing, a couple of things, I mean, that we didn't um, go on was your hand position. So obviously when your hands, you know, you, you know, when you've got your grip, if that doesn't feel comfy, just go hand over the top and make sure that your wrist is straight as well. Make sure you're not holding the bar with your wrist like that there. You want to be tight in it. Okay? So the three lifts, the... They've all got similarities, haven't they? They've all got a tight upper back, they've all got bracing, they've all got lats, uh, they've all got some sort of torquing. So they're all pretty much the same lift, just a different position. You know, when you think about it, a bench, it's like a, a deadlift, isn't it? Because you're in that position. Um, other things we probably didn't talk about was your grip. You know, when you're doing your deadlift, like guys ask the question, when do you change your grip to an under over? Try and stay with this for as long as possible. Only when you need it, go to an under over. Because obviously it is a grip exercise. Uh, what other things do you reckon we didn't cover? See if there's got any questions. Yeah, anything we didn't cover, you don't think? I want to say, like, uh, the deadlift and the short legs, you see, like, don't look straight in, like, a lot of people when they're lifting, like, they don't really get that close up because they're relaxing here, they just fly down there, like, you don't really yeah. see that. body's going to perform better in like a neutral position. If you put it out of position, you're not going to have as much power. So that goes for like that or like that. You know when you deadlift, keep it neutral. Don't hyperextend unless you find it hard to get a flat back without hyperextending. Um, any other questions then to close out? Um, have you all benefited? Have you? So Jake's put together a PDF, which once we get the pictures from Alex, we'll put it in and then you guys can get access to it. Uh, you got your five points, so it's just put it into practice now. So practice makes perfect, as I say, perfect practice. But is that is that true? Is it not? I don't know. Is it practice makes perfect? Perfect, perfect practice. practice. Perfect practice makes practice perfect. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So uh, thanks so much for Jake for sorting this out and putting it on for us, writing all the script. Any questions you have, guys, um, ask us all the way. But um, thanks so much for turning up on a Sunday morning. <laughs>
Thank you, Alex.